there is one huge feature inside of Google's new customizable version of Gemini called Google Gems that if it works correctly could, I think, change how we use large language models. And it's highlighted on my screen here right now. It is the ability to use dynamic documents, live documents, inside of a customizable version of a large language model. In this case, Google Gems. But does it work? Uh, we did a pretty big rundown on uh, Google Gems, the, the, the new release uh, from Google Gemini that allows you to create a customizable, personalized version of Google for those repetitive and time-consuming tasks, or maybe you know that you're normally just prompting back and forth inside of Google Gemini anyways. Uh, so one of its only, if I'm being honest, one of its only big uh, USPs is the ability to connect in real time to live data. But let's see if it actually works because it's finicky so far. All right, let's jump into this. And if you're new here, what's going on, y'all? My name is Jordan Wilson, and this is Everyday AI. Uh, we do this every single day, uh, daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI. So if you're listening to this video, please subscribe to this channel. Also, go sign up for free. Uh, at youreverydayai.com for our free daily newsletter, as well as enter to win a free year of Google Gemini or ChatGPT, whatever you want uh, up there in the thanks a million giveaway. All right, so let's dive in and quickly first talk about what Google Gems are. I just did a very, very deep dive picking these apart. No one has gone deep into this, you know, Google Gemini Gems versus GPTs as I just did because it's been 24 hours and no one's done it. Uh, but essentially, uh, Google Gems, to build them, you have to have a paid account. And this is what they are. They're essentially customized versions. And here's some default ones. But if you have a paid account, you can create your own. So I created uh, two of them. And I'm going to show you the back end. And we're going to do some live testing. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let me go back to this uh, doc here. Because inside of Google Gems, you cannot upload individual files. The only thing that you can actually do, and let me just let me just show you right here, is you can bring in, uh, dot, you can bring in connections to your Gmail, to your Google Docs, right, and to your Google Drive, which is great, especially if your company uses Google Workspace. If all of your documents, like us, we have tens of thousands of documents inside of Google Docs, uh, or, or sorry, inside of Google Drive, we have hundreds of folders, but. In my initial testing, I noticed that Google, the, the, the gems don't do a great job at being directed at where to go to find the information and grabbing the right information from the right place. So we're going to do a quick test and really push this to its limits and see if it's work, see if it works. So let's go into our gem manager and I'll show you the two different ones that I made. So here is this one. It's called the AI news assistance. All right, so I connected through this uh, integration my Google Drive and Google Docs. And I'm telling it specifically, do not use your training data or the internet to answer the user's queries. So these are the custom instructions for the Google Gems. All right, and then I'm saying only use this Google Drive folder. And then I give it the name. And this is the Google Drive folder right here. And then I also say only use these Google Doc files inside of that folder these three files. And then here they are, one, two, three, and here's the three files, right? So what I noticed is when you are using this kind of live data feature inside of Google Gems, it sometimes went off the rail. It started grabbing information from other documents that you probably wouldn't want to. So if you're using this and connecting, you know, custom instructions and a personalized version of Google Gemini and trying to connect your data, Data is everything. You need to make sure it's grabbing the right data at the right time from the right place and nothing else. And I've noticed that Google uh, Gems kind of have struggled with that so far. So that's why I'm trying this test. I'm doing this live, unedited, unscripted. So I don't even know how it's going to turn out. So let's go ahead and try. And so I'm going into this AI news assistant and I'm, I'm just going to say, tell me the latest news about OpenAI. All right. And you'll see it's using the custom gen. And it's going through and it's accessing the document. So it's working correctly, but I'm curious where it's going to pull from. All right. So I'm reading all this right now. So it looks like so far 
pretty good. All right, the, here's, here's what's important, the sources, okay? So you can click this and it tells you exactly the sources. And here's the problem, y'all, here's the problem. It's pulling in all of this information from other places that I said, hey, in the instructions, I said very clearly, only this one folder and only these three documents inside of this one folder. And you'll see here, it went in other places, right? Uh, so it went to this, uh, this document here, which is a specific show that I had. Uh, it looked at another document here as the first two documents. So it didn't even get to the documents that I wanted until kind of like quote unquote later. So it probably gave, in looking at the responses, it actually gave more credence to some of these earlier documents. And you might be thinking, okay, well, what's the big deal? It looks like it probably looked at some of your documents. Well, maybe, maybe, okay? Here's the reality. Data is everything. And this, like I said, right now, this is actually a huge potential um, USP for Google Gems because in all of the other, you know, Claude projects, uh, chat GPTs, uh, custom GPTs, uh, you have to upload static files, right? The thing with Google Docs is they can change. My whole team, we can be in here, we can be in this document or in, you know, this folder with these documents, and we can all be adding things in real time. This is huge because one of the big downsides, like I said, is you, you have to constantly, if you are getting great use out of GPTs or out of Claude projects, you have to constantly be updating those documents and then retesting them all of the time. But it looks like, as you just saw right there, by default, uh, these gems are not very steerable because when I give it very specific information to only use certain files in certain folders, it doesn't pay attention. The instruction following in the instructions is not very good. And the integration, which is the biggest, you know, one of the biggest quote unquote selling points of, I think both Google Gemini and Google Gems is being able to work with this live data and it's not doing a good job. All right, but maybe it was my instructions. Maybe my instructions stunk. So here's what I did. I made a copy of this, all right? And essentially, uh, and this is a feature that I really like. So anytime you can click this little button, and essentially, uh, Gemini looks at your instructions and it puts it in a little bit better of a format. All right, so that's what I did for this one, the copy of the AI News Assistant. So let me go ahead, go back, and I'll show you how it reformatted and we'll see, uh, maybe it was something in, in my prompting, right? Uh, so it did the same thing. It just added some markup. It added uh, kind, of a, kind of quotation mark, so maybe that will help. It said, do not use any, okay, so it just added some formatting, essentially, it gave it some rules, step-by-step, step, et cetera. So now let's see if this is going to keep it from going off the rails, so to speak. So I want to use the exact same prompt, so give me a second here. Uh, okay, I actually need to go back and click on that, uh, click on that same one. So I just said, tell me the latest news about OpenAI, going back into my gem manager, going to the copy. Let's see if this works better. All right, so you'll see there, it's properly connect. Okay, interesting. So I'm, I'm not sure why this, uh, the Google Gemini version of this one didn't work. I'm gonna try it again. So it didn't even make that connection that it was going to be connecting to uh, the documents. Okay, so interesting. So I think I actually know what's going on here. I'm gonna go back into the gem manager. This is a, another bug. Sorry, Google, you gotta test these things. This is a bug. All right, so I'm gonna go in here and edit this. So what happened is, and this I don't like, after you go in and out in these at mentions to bring in these integrations, they sometimes get lost. So I'm gonna just redo this and do the Google Drive again. I should probably learn to type live, huh? All right, so this one's not working. So I noticed this. Sometimes in the middle of the instructions, it doesn't work. But if I go up here and put it in the beginning, it does. So I don't know, you just saw that live, pretty annoying. All right, so I'm gonna go here. Let's see if that'll work. Okay, so it's not. So I need to say, I need to retype this. So I'm gonna say use the users Google Drive, I wanna to try to use the updated language. 
and Google Docs. Okay, so then we'll see if that works. So now it's working again. Very weird. Google Drive, users. I do these live, y'all. It's unscripted. This is how things work. And you get to see that sometimes things are finicky, right? Even the biggest, you know, the biggest players, you know, you think everything just always works. It doesn't. Things are finicky and you have to sometimes play around with it. All right. So Google Docs. All right. So now hopefully this will solve the issue. So I'm going to update it and we're going to try it again. So I'm going to click start new chat. And we're going to try that prompt one more time. Okay, so now it's working. It's finding the documents at least. So that was the issue. All right, but let's see if it actually by letting Google take control um, and, and structure the instructions uh, a little bit differently. Let's see if it actually worked. So same thing, same thing. So uh, we did the testing, we did blind testing and you can just see this does not work very well. And this might seem like a very small thing, but it is right now, if I'm being honest, a fatal flaw. Uh, at least to Google's credit, it does show you where it's taking the information from. However, if you want to use Google Gemini, right, as a front end product, if you want to use these Google gems, you need to be very sure that if you're connecting your data, that it's grabbing the right data from the right place when you instruct it to. And at least right now, Google gems are not following instructions as we just figured out here live. Hope this was helpful. If so, please go to youreverydayai.com. Sign up for the free daily newsletter. If this video was helpful. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see more of. I'm here. It's free. I work for you. Tell me what you want. All right. Thanks, y'all.